Captain Midnight. So a lot of you probably saw that last week HBO announced that they have four separate groups of writers working on Game of Thrones spinoffs right now. No one knows what the shows are about yet, or even if any of them will get greenlit, but it definitely seems like they're dead set on having a new Song of Ice and Fire show ready to go by the time Game of Thrones ends. But what should the new spinoff series be about? In this video, I'm going to be counting down a few of my favorite ideas. But this list isn't definitive, so be sure to add your own ideas in the comments below. And, uh, you know, maybe subscribe for some more Game of Thrones videos. Up to you. Number 5. Dunk and Egg. We'll start out with the obvious candidate, the Tales of Dunk and Egg. Starting with The Hedge Knight in 1998, George R. R. Martin has published a number of Dunk and Egg stories that were collected into A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms in 2015. Following Sir Duncan the Tall, a poor knight who travels the world, and his squire Egg, better known as Egg in Targaryen, the future king of Westeros, the stories are exciting, well written, and set nearly a hundred years before Game of Thrones. And in my opinion, that's kind of important. So a lot of people have been floating around the idea of a show about Robert's Rebellion, and I have to say, I'm just not into it. Because it would be set so closely to the events of Game of Thrones, and almost everyone's fate would be known from the start. But if you jump almost a century before that, you give the writers a lot more leeway to experiment. Not to mention Dunk and Egg are just flat out great characters that are fun to spend time with. There's definitely drawbacks too though. Dunk and Egg stories are much, much less complex than Game of Thrones, and have a much narrower focus. This isn't necessarily a bad thing if done well, but viewers going in expecting the massive, continent-spanning stories they're used to may end up a little disappointed. And trying to turn the material into something bigger in scale and more epic means that you could end up making the exact same mistake that the Hobbit movies did with its source material. But hey, as long as the show is good enough that the audience will accept this smaller, more intimate look at Westeros, I'd love to see Duncan Egg on the small screen. Number 4. The Century of Blood Hey, you know those awesome Valyrian swords everyone's always talking about? What casual viewers might not know is that Valyria, where they come from, actually has a very dark, interesting backstory. Thousands of years before the events of the show, the Valyrian Freehold was a beacon of advanced civilization. How many centuries before we learn how to build cities like this again? For thousands of years, the Valyrians were the best in the world at almost everything. And then they weren't. And then they weren't. That all very literally came crashing down when the mysterious Doom of Valyria, often called just the Doom, occurred. No one is quite sure what caused it, but the Doom was a cataclysmic event which wiped out everything in its path. It had everything, earthquakes, fire, and dragonstone raining from the sky, volcanoes. It was, it was some crazy stuff. But the events that took place after is where I would probably set the show. After the Doom, Essos was plunged into chaos. Called the Century of Blood, this era saw the Dothraki raid huge cities, slavers rise to power, and a huge loss of magic and knowledge that was known to the Valyrians. The nobles of the Valyrian Freehold, called Dragonlords, were scattered to the wind, each trying desperately to hold on to their power. It's a depressing but definitely interesting era, and for fans who care about unlocking the secrets of this ancient civilization, it would be great. But of course, for people who just want a good show, the writers would need to populate it with characters as good as the ones on Game of Thrones. That's a tall order, but this Century of Blood might just be the era to do it in. Number 3. The Fleeing Rhoynar Remember Arya's direwolf, Nymeria? Well, she was named after a powerful warrior queen who lived a thousand years before the start of the show. She was the queen of the Rhoynar people, who lived along the Rhoyne River in Essos. And unfortunately for her, those Valyrians I mentioned earlier weren't exactly the best neighbors. And due to their enormous dragon-having military, the Rhoynar found themselves on the edge of defeat. So Nymeria took a giant fleet and escaped with as many of her people as she could. And after a few false starts, they wound up in Dorne, where Nymeria made an alliance with and married King Morris Martell. And unlike the relatively peaceful Dorne we see in Game of Thrones, the Dorne of the past was fairly war-torn, with many rulers battling it out for supremacy. 
Nymeria, a brilliant military strategist, set out to unite all of Dorne under her rule. Her story could definitely make for a great series. That said, the writers would need to make sure that they differentiated her journey enough from another conquering queen that we're all familiar with. I got an idea, maybe more actual doing, less speechifying this time around? Do that, and Nymeria might just hold the key to the next Game of Thrones show. Number 2, The House Targaryen. I first heard this idea from TV and video game journalist Rowan Kaiser, who posted about it on Twitter. If you've seen my recent Lovecraft video, which I'll put a link to in the description, you'll know that I'm a big fan of the seasonal anthology idea, and the history of the Targaryens would be perfect for this new model of TV storytelling. The Targaryens have a rich and varied backstory that includes plenty of heroes and villains. Stories like Aegon's The First Conquest of Westeros or the Blackfyre Rebellion when the people rose up against Aegon the Unworthy are just a few examples of where this potential show could go every season. Technically, even the Duncan Egg stories could fit under this umbrella. I mean, Egg is a Targaryen after all. So there's a ton of exciting material here. Of course, that's assuming that HBO wants to roll the dice on accepting this very different kind of show from the Game of Thrones universe. Would they take that risk? I mean, I don't know. But I definitely think they should give the seasonal anthology a chance. Number 1. Beyond the Thrones So far, every idea I've listed has taken place long before the events of Game of Thrones. And that could be great, there's a lot of good stories there. But why are we assuming that prequels are the only option? What if instead of going backwards, the spinoff decided to go beyond the events of the show and the books? And sure, I have no idea how it will end. Maybe the Night King will rule King's Landing and any sequel series would have to be about taking Westeros back from a bunch of ice zombies. Who knows? But assuming things turn out relatively okay, like all of Westeros doesn't crumble to the ground or something, I have an idea of where I'd like to see things go. As many fans probably already know, George R. R. Martin took a lot of inspiration from the War of the Roses, a bloody English civil war that started in 1455 when creating A Song of Ice and Fire. Returning to English history, I would like to see something that rarely happens in fantasy universes. Actual progress. If the spinoff were to just leap ahead a good few centuries, I'd love to see a show inspired by the Victorian era, as seen through a fantasy lens. This was not only a fascinating time in British history, but in true Game of Thrones fashion, it was filled with political intrigue as well. And let's face it, the absolute monarchy seen in Game of Thrones isn't exactly working out. Seriously, like, we're cheering for Danny to conquer Westeros, but the whole time you're like, hmm. Maybe, like, just one person shouldn't rule the entire civilization, just tossing ideas out there. Uh, anyway, I'd love to see a new show set in Westeros that deals with a different political landscape entirely. And I'm not saying it has to go all steampunk or anything, but seeing the progression of time would definitely be interesting, with the possibilities of technology colliding with magic. Fill it with good characters and a great story informed by the events of Game of Thrones, and you can give the show a fresh feel while staying true to the series that preceded it. But of course, these are just a few of my ideas. Let me know what you guys think. But one thing's for sure, Westeros isn't going away anytime soon. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started. Because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes.